In this video, I'm putting Zapier and Make head to head. Both tools claim that they'll connect your apps and automate your workflows. But which one is actually worth your time and your money? Let's go through some real demos and both tools compare features and AI capabilities, break down the pricing and their free tiers, and talk about a couple of the extra features that make them unique. By the end, you'll know which one is for you. Now, full disclosure, Zapier is sponsoring this video, but they have not seen or reviewed it before it goes out. All thoughts and opinions are my own. And also, if it makes any difference, I'm paying for both tools with my own money. Now, I really struggled with this video because I was doing my testing in both tools and then I realized I had over an hour and a half of footage. No one's going to sit through that. So instead of giving you the play by play, I'm going to summarize my findings in each of the main areas and I'll tell you which tool does it better. Let's start with the core functionality. The core use case is to increase your efficiency and your productivity through automation. In Zapier, these automations are called zaps and in make, they're called scenarios. Since they both use different terminologies, I'm just going to call them both workflows to keep things consistent. Now, in terms of constructing workflows and configuring each step, I found Zapier to be more user friendly in this regard. The reason I say this is because a lot of the menus and the options and the field names, they're a lot more human readable. So for example, inside make, when you're configuring a step, you're going to see a lot more technical terms such as IDs, and some of the app actions are also labeled with technical terms like ACID, which if you know anything about databases, you'll know that it stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and dependency, I believe. But to the normal person, you'd be like, what's ACID? Whereas in Zapier, a lot of that information is abstracted. It's behind the scenes and you get human readable labels. Plus, there is AI help on each of the fields that if you don't understand how to fill out that field, you can tap on a button and get AI to explain what that field does. I would just in general say that the learning curve for creating workflows is higher in Make than it is for Zapier. Now, one neat thing I found with the Make Workflow Builder is that each of the steps, they're draggable. So you can arrange the workflow however you want. Whereas in Zapier, the workflows are structured from top down. And I think there's pros and cons to each, right? One gives you flexibility, but it could get messy. Whereas in Zapier, you can have consistency. Both tools support renaming each of the steps to whatever you want so that you can remember what each step of your workflow does. And both tools support various ways to kick off your workflows, including triggering instantly through some action on schedule, on demand, and on intervals. Now, in terms of which tool has more app integrations, Zapier is the clear winner here. They've been around longer. They support more than 7,000 app integrations, whereas Make supports more than 2,000, as of this recording, at least. The nice thing is that in both tools, if you select an app and you don't find the action that you're looking for, they support custom API calls. So again, this is more of a technical feature. If you are comfortable reading API documentation for the tool that you're trying to use, then you can make custom API calls. So considering all of what I just said, given that Zapier has more app integrations and is less confusing to use and configure, I'm giving the point to Zapier. Okay, now let's talk about more advanced workflows. Both tools have steps that you can add to your workflow that can do branching, decision-making, logic, calculations, and more. For example, you can use the path step to execute different automations based on conditions. The filter step will allow you to only continue with the workflow if certain conditions are met. Format allows you to change things like dates and times to different formats. The code step is especially useful, allowing you to write Python or JavaScript code to do anything you'd like. In this area, I would say it's a tie between both of the tools. I didn't find any deficiencies in either of them. Now let's talk about AI features. I reviewed this from multiple perspectives. One, from the perspective of helping you construct workflows. Number two, using AI in the actual workflow itself. And number three, other AI features such as MCP servers. Okay, let's talk about AI in terms of constructing workflows first. Now, both tools have a little AI chat window where you can ask it to build the workflow for you. You just have to describe what you're imagining. So in both tools, I asked the AI to build me a workflow that watched for submissions into my form. And then that would log the submission into a Google Sheet. 
and then it would send me a notification in Slack. I was specifically vague to see how each of the AI would behave and interpret my request. Now, both tools selected the right apps and the overall structure of the workflow was correct. However, Zapier got the edge because its AI actually went ahead and tried to configure each of the steps for me, whereas Make just selected the correct apps in the right order, but didn't try to configure any of the steps. Now, I mentioned this before, but what I find really nice about configuring the steps in Zapier is that for any of the fields that look confusing and you're not understanding what you're supposed to put in there, you can tap on a little information bubble on the field, which pops up Ask AI. You can click on that and the AI will actually contextually explain for the app you're looking at, for the field that you're inquiring about, what it is that you need to fill out. Whereas on Make, they still only had that AI chat window in the lower right hand corner and you'd have to try to explain to it what you're asking about, like which step, which app, which field. So it's just less user friendly to do it that way. So I would say Zapier's AI is more integrated into the building process. Now in terms of using AI in the actual workflow, both tools have predefined AI steps that can just add AI capabilities very easily into your workflows. Steps such as summarizing text, or analyzing sentiment or translation, things like that. There's actually a lot more. And both tools also had an AI step where you can write a custom prompt to do whatever you'd like. But here's where I noticed a big difference. With Zapier, I had access to many models. Some were free and some I had to add my own API key. With Make, I only had access to a few models and none of them were free. They would consume my make credits. And we'll talk about that later when we compare pricing models because they're very different in that regard as well. Furthermore, Zapier's AI step allowed a lot more customization. Like it was vastly different. I could specify the input data that I would want the AI to work with, custom knowledge sources that I want the AI to have, and then even the specific outputs that I wanted the AI to generate so that they would be available for the subsequent steps. And there was also a useful button in this menu for me to improve my prompt in case I wasn't being specific enough. So that was very helpful. In Make, there weren't very many configurable options at all. And maybe that's sufficient, but coming from seeing Zapier's AI step, I thought that there was a big difference. Okay, so let's talk about MCP servers. Both tools can act as an MCP server. If you're unfamiliar with the term, MCP allows your AI tool to read data and perform actions on other apps. So for example, if you're using ChatGPT in the browser, you can ask it to update events in your Google Calendar. Now, Zapier has a separate interface for creating an MCP server, which lets you select the actions that you want available on that server. You can also execute workflows that you've created. Now, Make does not have a separate interface, but it allows you to use any of the workflows that you've created that as long as you set those to be triggered on demand, you're going to be able to access them through your Make MCP server. The setup process for Make's MCP server is a little more technically involved because you have to generate an API key and then you have to read the Make documentation for the tool that you're using to get the code snippet. And then you have to insert your API key into the code snippet. And then finally, follow the steps with your AI tool. On the Zapier side, it'll construct the code snippet along with the any keys or tokens it already needs in one window. So you can just hit copy. And then again, you have to follow the instructions to integrate that code snippet into your AI tool of choice. So for the AI category, I have to give the point to Zapier again for deeper AI integration into the workflow building part, more options when it comes to using AI directly in your workflows and then also a more guided experience when it comes to setting up MCP servers. Now let's talk about extra features now because this is where they differ a little bit too. Where Make focuses on the automation and the workflows, Zapier has a couple of extra features to round out the package. Specifically, I wanna call out tables and interfaces because recently Zapier updated all of their plans to include these two features in all of their plans. Interfaces allow you to set up public facing forms or pages that allow people to enter data into them, which you can then hook up to trigger your workflows. Tables allow you to store data and automatically trigger different automations or workflows. Tables and interfaces combined with workflows make Zapier a more complete package versus make 
who just focuses on workflows. So I would give the point here to Zapier as well. Okay, so now let's talk about pricing because this is where things differ greatly. Each tool charges you based on a different set of criteria. And Zapier gives you a certain number of tasks per month. Each action in your workflow costs one task, but the trigger doesn't count as a task. Also, remember when we talked about more advanced workflows where each tool had their own steps that you can add branching paths, logic, filtering, formatting, those types of things. In Zapier, these steps, they don't cost a task either. Make, on the other hand, uses a credit system. So you get a lot more credits in Make's plans. However, the way that you consume credits is also different. In Make, each step in your workflow costs one or more credits. Some of the more complex ones will cost more credits, whereas the basic steps would cost one credit. Also in Make, even the trigger, that would also cost credits. Furthermore, for Zapier's AI step, there are some models that you can use for free. However, it counts as a task, whereas Make's AI step will count as credits. Okay, let's talk about their free tiers because they're also very different. Zapier gives you unlimited workflows that you can create, but each workflow is limited to two steps. It also gives you 100 tasks per month. Now, Make's free plan gives you two total workflows that you can create, but in each workflow, it doesn't seem to limit you on the number of steps you can have, instead limiting you to the total runtime of the workflow to be less than five minutes. It also gives you a thousand credits. Also note, now both free plans include the MCP server. Also note that Zapier's free plan includes tables and interfaces, features that Make doesn't have. Now, when it comes to paid plans, at least at the time of this recording, Zapier's lowest paid tier is $20 per month and gives you 750 tasks with additional capabilities such as multi-step zaps, access to more app integrations, webhooks, and more. Make's lowest paid tier, on the other hand, is starting at $9 a month, gives you 10,000 credits with additional features such as unlimited workflows. Now take note that everything I've said here, depending on when you're watching this, may not be accurate because these tools are updating their plans and what they offer. So the best thing would be to actually go to the pricing pages and check out what you get. But in terms of, as of this recording, which one is better? It was really hard to compare because their pricing models are so different that I think how much it ends up costing you is really going to depend on the types of workflows that you create. So for this category, I'm not going to award points to either. So we've gone through a lot of different aspects in each of these tools and my final recommendation goes to Zapier. Now Zapier's plans, they do start off a little higher, but at the end of the day, you're gonna to have to see how much that matters to you. And there's one more consideration I didn't talk about and this one's a little more opinion, so that's why I saved it for here, and that is track record. Zapier has been around a lot longer and to me, that means it's a more mature company. I think that means more checks and balances, more security measures, more attention to detail, placed on the user experience. And to me, that's important because I'm trusting this platform with access to all of my apps. And the downside of a more mature company though, typically you would think that it's more behind the curve, it's slower to adopt cutting edge technology, but that couldn't be farther from the case with Zapier. I've watched the CEO, Wade Foster, lead the charge headfirst into the age of AI. And because they're a larger company, they've actually been able to dedicate a lot of resources on improving the AI capabilities of Zapier. So my personal vote, it goes to Zapier and it's the tool I've been using since 2018. I'm really happy to see that they're not falling behind. In fact, they're pushing the envelope. And just in case this is where you cast your vote as well, give them a visit using the link right over here or in the description below. And if you really wanna see how Zapier works behind the scenes, check out this video right over here. Or if you wanna see how MCP and AI can boost your productivity, check out this video over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.